Okay, good morning. Tim Campbell here again. Um, I've got another cartoon that I'm going to go ahead and color this morning. Um, I was up kind of late last night uh, doing the drawing on the cartoon, so I got that finished. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and scan the cartoon in here and kind of talk about the, um, the topic of the cartoon. And we'll see what goes on here. Um, see what you think. So let me get the scanner warmed up here. Uh, scanner, scanner. It should open up here in just a second, and we'll get it on the computer and, and get it ready to color. Okay, there's the image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the area for the cartoon. That's pretty close. And set it to be a TIFF. And I'm just going to name it uh, Travis. Um, this is a cartoon about the guy down in Tennessee that uh, shot up the Waffle House and killed four people before he was stopped. Um, so, okay, hang on here just a second. I can uh, enlarge this cartoon. You can kind of see what it is. Go to open file. And it should be right here, Travis. Okay, we'll open it up right here, and I'm not sure if you can see that or not. It is a uh, assault weapon, uh, an AR-15, which is what he used apparently, and I'm going to go ahead and take the image, and I'm going to rotate it clockwise, 90 degrees, um, enlarge it here a little bit so you can kind of see. Once again, I do these drawings in pencil, so um, it's a little bit gray right now, so what I want to do is go ahead and darken it, and... What I will do here is I go to image and some adjustments, go here to levels and set it at uh, 111, hit OK. I'm going to push some contrast, make it a little more black and white, I guess. Um, so if I go to brightness and contrast, and again, I usually type in the numbers 25 on each of those and that helps to push a little bit. And again, I go to levels and darken it up a little bit more. Okay. Now, if you can see, if I enlarge it here a little bit, you can see there are some little areas like, like right here, this little area right here, I wanna get rid of that. So I'm on the eraser tool, um, I'm on white of course. Let me see, I've got 100% opacity, so I can just do things like get rid of these little areas here uh, that I wanna eliminate uh, before I start coloring here, start looking around for uh, just little imperfections here on the drawing itself so that I don't have to go back after it's done and say, oh, I missed that and need to go back in. It's a little bit easier to fix it here in the beginning than to go back and do it. Not quite as difficult. Um, so if I can take care of some of this stuff before I get going too far, that's always a good idea. So not seeing too much. Um, in the imagery here. Okay, I'm going to back it up so you can kind of see the whole image. Let me kind of move me out of the way here a little bit. Okay, um, let me go back into... Um, I've said this before in a couple of videos, I think. Um, I try to go around the outside with this eraser tool uh, sometimes, and you can see it down here at the very bottom. There's a an outline around the frame of the cartoon that I, I have when I scan these in. So I try to make sure I get rid of all of that. Um, and then typically go around the outside of the image just to make sure I get any tiny little imperfections, um, pixels or whatnot that I do not want to see. So I'll go back up here. Um, it's looking fairly clean. There's a couple of little uh, dirty, smudgy areas. I don't know if you can see it in this area here. Um, just some gray pixels. Let's see if I can enlarge it and you can kind of see some of the little gray pixels there. Let me see if I can clean that up just a little bit more. Um, once I get a little further into the cartoon and uh, I, I get away from uh, some of the, the imagery as far as like it goes to print and, and stuff like that, save it to different kinds of files, 
some of that will be eliminated. You won't be able to see it, but it's still, it's bothering me right now. And I don't want to take the chance that it might end up being there like in the newspaper. So uh, if I can take care of that right now, I will. Let me see if I can push the contrast a little bit more on the brightness and contrast. I'm going to go about 20 on each. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, okay, and I'm going to darken it one more little time here. Um, go to levels. Again, at this point, I just kind of use the slider here. And uh, typically, I get around 100 again before I think it's pretty good. Okay, um, yeah, I like that, that's not too bad. Okay, what the imagery is here, again, um, is the AR-15 assault weapon here that was used by Travis Ryan King down in Tennessee. And uh, here's the story behind the cartoon. Um, what kind of bothers me and what I'm trying to say here is this, it sounds to me like in a lot of the stories I'm reading about this is that, well, obviously if you've read about this, he he was at the White House like last year and had this assault rifle there too and uh, was trespassing and, and they stopped him and they took away his weapon. And eventually the weapon got back to his father. Uh, the authorities ended up giving it to his father and his father gave it back to him. Um, this young man has a history of, uh, let's say, not being all there sometimes and uh, for whatever reason, his father gives him the weapon back. And so, of course, he goes to the Waffle House and he's killed some people. And uh, it just seems silly to me that he's done this. Um, and it could have been prevented very easily by a parent stepping in and, and, well, just get rid of the weapon. This kid doesn't need this AR-15 to begin with. What in the world's going on? So anyway, um, this is a cartoon. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'm going to throw the type in on it right now and show you how I do that. Um, Tell you what, typically what I do is I work in Illustrator. Um, let me go ahead and open up Illustrator here, file, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to file here and go to recent files. I'm gonna show you what I do here. I've got my own little personal alphabet um, typeface that I have kind of created for myself. So as you can see, I've created these letters here in Illustrator. Um, <laughs> And it's all uppercase, all capital letters. I got some punctuation, some numbers, and so forth. And what I do is I, I grab this alphabet and I throw it into a new file and I create whatever I want to say with this alphabet. So um, I'll open up a, a couple of files here again for you to see. Um, this file here is called Travis. It's going to go on the tag. Um, that's hanging off the gun. It's like a little gift tag or a note and it says Travis. I'm giving this back Try to behave this time love dad. So that's what's going to go on the tag on the gun Okay, and Then the other thing at the very bottom using the alphabet that I uh, Created here. It's going to say this once again mental illness causes a shooting um, Because I think it's just crazy that this father gave the gun back. So I think the first thing I will do once uh, before I even start coloring the cartoon is go ahead and get these uh, these little uh, pieces of copy into the artwork. Um, so what I want to do here is go ahead and set this up to start coloring first so I can save it. Uh, if I go to the background here, um, I want to put it in a, the mode of multiply so I can color behind it. Um, I'll go ahead and set up another layer. Um, and again, I drag that down. Layer one is going to be the color. So I'll just go ahead and put color there. Um, layer zero, I will oh, cancel that. Um, layer zero, I'm going to label that just line art. Okay, now I can go ahead and hit save. So I can save this file, which you want to do quite often. You want to keep hitting save once in a while. So if your computer, you know, kind of crashes a little bit, you don't lose the work you've already done. So uh, that's always kind of helpful. One of the first things I learned about the computer is to hit save all the time. So anyway, I try to do that. Um, and so anyway, here we go. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can't put some of the copy down. Um, I'll go to place embedded and I will go to the file, I believe I called it Travis. Yeah, the Illustrator file Travis. And place it here on the file. Okay, if you can see it's right here. And 
it's above the black line art. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it a little bit to put it into that little uh, tag there. And actually size wise, this looks fairly close to the size that I want it to be. Um, I might end up changing this a little bit and throwing some color in there on the type. Um, not quite sure yet. I can also, before I place it, um, I can drag it, stretch it, and adjust it a little bit. I can make it bigger, smaller, uh, whatever I want to do. Um, so, but right now, that's not too bad. It looks like it's floating inside the, uh, the little tag there, the little paper tag. So, that's not too bad. Let me back out a little bit. So, I'll go ahead and hit return, which will place it there. Okay. So that's not too bad. And you can see, I don't know, well, maybe you can't see, it's kind of small probably. Anyway, right here, there's a brand new layer just called Travis. So whenever you throw a, a copy down, typically it would, uh, it'll set up, not typically, it will, it will set up a new layer uh, with just that copy. So you can uh, get rid of it real quick or, or work around it without uh, messing with it or anything like that. So the next layer that I'll throw down is the copy uh, that goes at the bottom about the, the statement about mental illness. And again, I'll go to place embedded and I'll go down here. It's just labeled mental as an illustrator file. And there it is. So um, pretty much like this, I'm going to probably enlarge it just a tad. Yeah, that's not too bad. And let me see if I enlarge it. Maybe you can see this. One of the nice things is, um, you can kind of see that little magenta line that, that appears. That's when I've got the type centered or pretty close to being centered. So that's pretty much what I want to do with this, uh, this little piece of copy here is to center it. Um, and again, I can stretch the copy. I can do all sorts of little things to manipulate it and get it the way I want. Um, so this is how the copy is going to be probably pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. So this is the cartoon. Uh, it's going to be the AR-15. Um, it's going to have a little note there from dad saying, I'm going to give this back to you, Travis, and try to behave this time. And of course that didn't work out. So once again, mental illness causes a shooting. So anyway, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring uh, the cartoon. And I will go back down here to the color layer. Um, and let me see, I need to go into the correct mode. Uh, if I go here to image and mode, it's in grayscale. I want to go to CMYK and it's going to ask some questions here. Don't merge, don't rasterize and okay. Okay. I'll go to my brush tool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Command B is brush. And, um, these weapons here are typically kind of a dark grayish blue, steel type color. So I'm just going to kind of throw down a base color here. I think uh, something in kind of a, eh, a gray blue. If you can see it, it's kind of this, uh, this gray blue color here. Um, just to start with. And let me see. Yeah, it's not too bad. Just for a starting point. And as you can see, I don't care about staying in the lines. Once again, um, I'm going to go back in and erase anything that I've uh, that I don't want. And so it's it's just a matter of getting the color in, the lights and the darks and so forth right now. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, typically what I will do is go into a darker color now, a, a darker variation of the same color uh, to try to get some, uh, get some shadow area working here. Um, uh, let me see. Okay. I think actually overall, I want to go ahead and make the whole thing darker. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool, um, pick up that first color, and this color layer that I've got right now, um, I could go back with my eraser tool and just erase everything, or I can just throw that layer in the trash, um, which is just a little bit quicker. So I'm going to do that, and I'll just create another layer uh, and call it color and start over. There we go. And since I didn't like that color to begin with, I'm going to go just a little bit more blue, I think. And maybe just a little bit darker. And I go back to my brush tool. And if you can see that little circle there, that's, that's the brush tool. That's what I'm going to paint in. Um, I can enlarge it, um, reduce it, and so forth. So you can have some control over how large of an area you're painting. Okay. Yeah, this is a little bit better. I like this color better. Um, you know, you start drawing something like this and you're thinking, oh, this will be easy to paint because it's just pretty much one color. It's all monochromatic. It's going to be that blue-gray color uh, just with some lights and darks. But there's so many little areas here on this weapon um, that it's going to take a little bit of time to go in and do some of the darks and lights and so forth and get this going here. Um, um, as far as this tag right here, I'm going to go ahead and color it on a different layer. Um, I don't need that. Um, I'll just label it tag. Okay. Um, the tag itself, I want it to be uh, fairly white, but not totally white like the background. Give it just a little bit of color. Um, so I'm going to give it kind of a little bit of a yellowish gray. Very, very light. Um, Maybe something like that, maybe even lighter than this, but uh, for now, uh, that's kind of close. Just give it a little bit of value, um, just a little bit of tone here, just so that it's different from the background. But it's you still want the contrast. You still want it to be readable that it, um, that the copy is coming through. You don't want to uh, make it difficult and, and and not as legible as you want. Um, the other thing I've got, I've got this little um, ribbon here, and that's an area that I kind of thought about quite a bit. I'm going to make that a bright red color, like a red ribbon. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I wanted something to make this weapon or this image pop a little bit. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I was thinking about in, in drawing this cartoon was that People have gotten used to seeing these kinds of weapons. They're all over the news and the paper and everywhere else. And what can I do to make this a little bit more uh, interesting, make it jump out? And I thought, okay, I'll take this weapon and I'll have this little red ribbon hanging off of it. That's going to give you just a little bit more visual interest so the viewer will, will actually you know, stop and, and look at it a little bit uh, better, I think. So uh, I've got the red here and... It's pretty thin and small, so I'm just going to give it this little piece of red here. Yeah, a little bit of red, and go back into that, uh, make it a little darker here. Some of it's going to be in shadow, like the ribbon that's behind uh, right here. I hope this is kind of making sense to everybody. Um, maybe go back to that first red there. Um, maybe darken it a little bit too, or, or make it a little bit more uh, chromatic, colorful, brighter, a little bit more intense. So uh, it'll pop even more. Okay, now let's go to a darker red for the shadowy area. Um, again, if I haven't pointed this out before, I think I did. You can see the colors here that I'm, I'm working with. Um, this little red rectangle right here, that's the color that I've been using. And the color that I'm selecting is the one on top. So I can automatically see the contrast um, from one color to the next. And it kind of helps you to make the decision here. Okay. There we go. 
sense a little bit better, I think. Um, let's go back to the first brighter red and maybe find just a little bit of a lighter pinkish area to, again, make it pop just a little bit. Okay. And I will probably eventually go back in and put some absolute like white highlights in this just just for a little pop here. And, uh, and of course there is like some white highlights on ribbon. The surface of ribbon is pretty slick. So you're going to get some white highlights here and there. Um, so I think that not only will it make it look more realistic, let's say, um, more believable, but it will also work to help push the contrast, um, from different areas. We'll go ahead and go ahead and hit that white right now. Um, just a little bit of white right there. Okay. I think that's fairly close. Okay. I'm going to go right back in here and on the card, um, go ahead and clean this up here since that red kind of spilled over into the card a little bit. I want to clean that up. Just that area right there. Okay, now I'm going to go to my eraser and I'm going to start eliminating some of this red that's gone out of the lines. Uh, let's see if I can enlarge it. It might help me a little bit to get into this tight area here. Okay, there are some little areas that I can go back into a um, little bit more detail, but I want to just kind of keep moving forward so you can uh, kind of see this coming together a little bit. Um, As you can see, this eraser tool, it's just getting rid of the red and not any of the, uh, the color that I've got on the gun because that is on a separate layer. So that's the beauty of working in layers like this. You, you can just uh, focus on one thing at a time and not be uh, damaging or, or doing something you don't want to do to, let's say, a different area of the, uh, the artwork. So um, this is one of the beauties of Photoshop and computer technology and stuff is that you can work like this. So, um, so there you go. That's kind of the basic cartoon right now, as you can see. Um, I'm, like I said, I might go back in and change some of the, uh, the lettering there on the tag there where it talks about Travis and stuff. I might change that to a little bit of color to make it pop a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to go back in and I'm going to work on the, uh, the color on the gun and uh, kind of work shadow sides and light sides and it's going to have some, some probably some white highlights reflective since it's fairly uh, uh, metallic and stuff like that. So there'll be some, some high contrast going in from light to dark on that. Um, and then I'll go back in and I'll erase uh, what I don't want. Okay. Um, and of course throw my signature in there. So um, I'm not going to go into it too much more, maybe just a little bit. Um, I don't know if you want to see the whole thing or not, but um, I will go ahead and go back into this blue-gray color here, um, get like a darker 
variation of it. Uh, I have to go back to the color uh, layer that I was working in here. I don't want to do this on the tag layer. Um, yeah, just show you a little bit what I'm talking about here. Okay, so you can kind of see it's a little bit of a darker color here. Um, kind of working on some of the shadow area here. see okay like the barrel of the gun let's say the light source is up above typically um, that's what happens is that the light source would be above um, so the shadow would be down underneath things and so forth um, shadow area on this side of each one of these little uh, sections. Okay, um, what I will do is go back to my uh, base color and let's go ahead and get a lighter version of it so you can kind of start to see a little bit of the dimension coming through. Um, Okay, back off a little bit. Okay, maybe in this uh, area here, down towards the uh, the barrel of the gun, you can kind of start to see some of the uh, the value helping to give it a little bit of a three dimensional appearance. Um, and that's very important on something like this, which is it's pretty much uh, monochromatic or, or or pretty much you know variations of one color here, um, using darks and lights to kind of. Uh, separate visual information and create uh, the illusion of depth and so forth. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is kind of continue to do this and, and build the gun up a little bit more visually and then go back in a race, uh, probably make a few adjustments and so forth. Um, and then I will go ahead and post the cartoon on here and uh, send it off uh, to the Washington Post uh, editors and stuff like that. So. Um, Anyway, this is the cartoon. I hope it's been informative, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.